Hi guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another tutorial for you. Now in this tutorial we're going to be looking at sloped hills. Now I haven't done much on sloped hills, so the, the hills I've been covering mainly are these. Yeah, mainly for 28mm wargaming, you know, we see a lot of stepped and plateau hills, but we don't see many uh, sloped hills. And the reason being is that to get our models to balance on them, the gradient actually has to be quite low, in, in the region of like 25 degrees. Okay, and so they take up a lot of table space for relatively little height. Okay, but that doesn't mean we should ignore them. They have their place. Now, they're far more common in 15mm and 6mm, where the center of gravity of the models is a lot lower. And also, what you call it, the, the sort of gradiated height means more. You know, a height of an inch in something like 40k or Saga doesn't really mean that much. It's a gentle slope. But in 15mm, you know, that's a good hill. Okay, now if we wanted to replicate the height of this, okay, with a sloped hill going up and then back down, to go two inches up, we'd actually have to go approximately 12 inches, six inches up one way and then six inches down the other way. And the way this is worked out is on a magical calculation. Yeah, and it's just a general rule of thumb that I use, which is a one in three. For every one inches you go up, yeah, your slope needs to go across three inches. And I'll show you the maths behind this. I did a little video on it. And I'll throw the link up and what you call it. You can check it out for yourself. But just take that for granted that, you know, if you want to build sloped hills for 28 millimeter models, okay, you need to be looking at a sort of three in, or one in three gradient, you know, one up for every three across. Now, if you notice in the back, what you've got, I've got some stuff on the table there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go cameras down. I'll, I'll start actually talking about the nitty gritty and showing you. In. You'll have a far better understanding. So let's go cameras down and I'll see you in a minute, guys. Right, guys, what I've got here is the base I came up with for Gale Force 9's Grand Vestibule. And I'm customizing it up to make it a centerpiece. Uh, but I've had an idea, so I'm going to have to put it on hold until I get a few more bits and bobs to finish this. But it's a good example for this particular tutorial because I need to bevel this off so that watch clip models can stand on it. Now, obviously, that's the Grand Vestibule. It sits roughly there. Okay, and then the idea is we're going to have a slope coming up and then a flat on top for the model to stand on. Okay, so let me put that to one side. So we've got to shape this. Now, this is white polystyrene. Uh, I know it's not the best for filming, I know it's not the best for modelling yet, but it's the stuff I had, it's an inch and a quarter high, which works well for this project. And it's all going to be covered over with plaster and, and texture and glue and all sorts of different things. So it being white polystyrene doesn't really matter, to be perfectly honest. Now, as this is purely about sort of shaping the polystyrene, there's only some basic tools you need. Now, yeah, I could use hot wire tools, I could use power tools. OK, but I don't need to. And the chances are you're not going to have those. So I'm going to use the tools you will have. OK, like all my videos, it's about showing you what you can do in your own home. OK, off your own little workbench <laughs> or the coffee table. The amount of glue. We're, we're quite a crafty family and this, this table gets covered and used all the time for crafts. You know, so I'm not going to get in trouble for this. Now, what I have got is I have a kitchen knife. OK, just a standard long blade kitchen knife. I have my trusty steak knife. I have a retractable Stanley. OK. And some sandpaper and a block. And that's all I have. Yeah, that's all I need to do this job to actually shape and show you. Now, before we start shaping, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. So I'll just put those there quickly. And I'll just lift this up a little so you can see it. Right, obviously you can see where the Grand Vestibule is going to go. Okay, then I've got this red, yeah, area. Yeah, and this is the flat. And then I've got this black area marked off and there's a, a bit of white in between. Okay, now what this represents, okay, and I'll start with the black. This is the must cut area. Working on my three by one calculation, okay, I must cut a flat all the way along there from this line to that edge this line to that edge okay to make sure i've got a 20 degree gradient that my models can stand on if i do not cut all of this and i go shy and there's any of this re remaining the angle will be too high for my models to stand on what the red represents is the no cut zone this is the area that i really want to stay flat and so i don't want to be cutting and taking too much into this 
OK, I need to be aware that, you know, a little bit of sanding is fine, you know, a little bit of grading. But this is where I need models to stand on the other side of the outside of the wall. So I can't mess with this. This bit in the air, in the middle, I can mess with that. OK, so the first thing we need to do. Yeah. And it's a technical thing. Yeah. We need to take off this piece to make sure that straight from the off, our angle is good. I mean, remember, we can always take off more and lower the angle. What we don't want to do is have a situation where the angle is too high. Now, I'm using this to do it. I could use hot wire tools, etc. But what I need is a blade that will run from that line as I cut it in to there. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to be messy, OK? I'm, it's This isn't the best thing to cut it. You know, if I was doing it with a blade, this would probably be better, OK? But it's not long enough. And I don't have one of those really long Stanley exacto things. So. It's kitchenware for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start shaving into it. And as you can see, it's messy. It's a rough cut, but it works fine. Now, if you notice, I'm resting my blade on there, on this wooden edge, but I'm not cutting straight into. I can go in in slices. So the first one, let's take off that first edge. Oi, that's the coffee table. I'm so glad this is what I work coffee table. You wouldn't believe the amount of tattoo ink and, and stuff that's gone on here. So anyway, yeah, what I'm doing, yeah, simply shaving it down. Ugh. Right, so that's our first one. Okay, that is too steep for models. So I'm going to come in. And this time, I'm cutting through that black line into the sort of white area, only just. And what I'll do is I'll break that there because I can always come back and clean that up. It's about showing you this, isn't it? You got a good view on that? So let's go this way. And I'll break that there. So we've got a nice work area. So there you have it. That is our minimum cut. Oh. Just let me just see these off. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, a Rex from uh, Super Dungeon Explore. Standing, no problem. Blood Bowl characters, no problem. Uh, Space Marine Librarian. Oh, a little bit of a problem. Actually, no, he's fine. That's just weather, sort of. I haven't sanded this yet. Okay, uh, Victoria Lamb Guard. Fine. Yeah, Space, uh, sorry, Imperial Guard, Victoria Lamb model. And they're all standing. Now, remember, this is the sort of steepest. I've got all this sort of area to play with. Yeah, but straight from the off, those models are standing. It's a little bit bumpy, but that's because of the texture of this. So there we have it. Straight off, that's our minimum cut, and that's a slope, a three-in-one slope that I know models can stand on. The next thing I can do is take this one and start shaving into it. Yeah, remember, I know that I can make the gradient. There's no way that if I cut into this, like this, that the models won't be able to stand on it. So all I'm doing is just taking little bits off and getting a bit of a, a gradient on it. I probably don't really need to do this to be truthful because this is probably going to get wiped out by the sanding anyway because it's already pretty good. But if you had any large lumps or anything, that's how you do it. So as you can see, yeah, that smoothed it out. OK, the next job, let me zoom that in a little so you can see better. Sorry, I didn't do that earlier, guys. My bad. Right, anyway, I'll see if I can do something post-edit to give you a closer view. Next up is the sandpaper. OK, and all I'm going to do is quickly sand over this. Yeah, and you'll notice I am sanding into this red area here. 
yeah I'm also respecting this wooden edge so that's a quick sand over yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in a few places just get a bit of undulating terrain rather than just a smooth surface. So. As you can see, it's all smoothed off now. Yeah, these models, no worries. no worries whatsoever putting these on here okay and that is the basic premise on making a sloped hill now there's a couple of considerations that you need to put in place okay first off you can obviously see I've got a gap here to here now my plan is yeah because I am this piece was only so large my plan is quite simply I'm going to use filler and just fill that gap when I'm doing the texturing, etc. So I'll just come round it, I'll just smooth filler all the way around. I'm going to bevel this edge anyway. Yeah, I'll put filler in and then I'll sand it down once the filler's hardened. So that's not a problem. Now, there's one other thing to consider. There's only one way that you can make it so that your models can't stand on this gradient now. And that's if you were to cut into it. Yeah, sort of horizontally and make a ledge because the, uh, the closer end of the ledge, the gradient's got to go up to regain that height. Now, if you do that, there's a couple of things you can do. If you just want to get it, sort of fill it in, just put filler over your sort of dip and just smooth it off and that it's gone. The other things you can do is you can put ground stoppers in, uh, model placement stoppers, I suppose you could call them. And so if you imagine, if you had a dip there where the lip of it just up here was quite sharp, if you were to put a little rock in, yeah, then people aren't going to place their model on that little gradient anyway. Yeah, and that sort of gives you the ability to sort of make really undulating terrain and little gullies and, you know, more realistic landscaping whilst making it fully functional and people not, I mean, people don't mind if they see a rock and they can't place, you know, their model just there. Yeah, what annoys people is when they get their nicely painted model, they put it on a piece of terrain that they think is stable and the damn thing falls over. Yeah, and if you were using some brand's glues, you know, normally shatters. So that's it. That's the considerations. Now, obviously, it's just sandpaper. It's just cutting. It's a simple process. It's a one in three process. Keep your models by your side. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, as always, throw them into the comments or grab me on Google Plus or Facebook. If you like what I like, if you like what I do, then please like it. If you find trade interesting yet, yeah, then subscribe or throw a subscribe link up. This sort of rounds off the what call it the hills. So I'll be moving on to something else soon. But in the meantime, I'll whack this up, and hopefully with a bit of post editing, you'll be able to see the, the details a bit more closely. Sorry about that, guys. In the meantime, you have a good day, guys, and I will see you soon. All the best now. Ta-da.